I hope you all know you have a chance to witness history live. Like you should honestly, I feel honored to be here right now. This is actually internet history. Um, we're getting two, you know, old YouTube legends in the scene to come on and have a verbal bout, the first, you know, verbal bout, really getting into this, getting into the buildup to this historic fight on the Misfits 007 card, KSI prelims. This is it, baby. This is everything right here. All right. Once Boogie okay. joins, up, get it going. Boogie's in here. Um, now, Boogie, what you need to do is hit request to speak. And Boogie, make sure you're on your phone because if you're on a PC, it does not work. You have to be on your phone. All right, I uh, just, just brought him up. Me? You hear me? Yeah, just we got you, Boogie. All right, so quick thing when you're when you're done talking, just hit the mute okay. button just to make things easy. All right, before we get started here, go ahead, hit the mute button. It's like right in the bottom left, Boogie. And then when you talk, just go off mute. And then when you're done talking, go back on mute. All right, guys, they're both on stage. Boogie versus Wings of Redemption. Hit the share button. Send it out to the Twitters. I'm doing it right now. Let's blow this thing up. And let's see what happens here. Uh, let's see. Boogie, why did you accept this fight? Man, you and I talked about fighting for a while. And I, I, mean, I was willing to fight just about anybody because I was looking for a reason to get into shape and look for a reason to get back in the public eye for a little while. Uh, but then when I found out it was Jordy, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Honestly, at first I thought it would be fun to work with Jordy. This dude ain't made it fun. One step of the way. There ain't nothing fun about this guy. Now I'm ready to knock his ass out. Now I'm ready to fight his ass. I did this because I wanted to save my life. I did this because I wanted to save my career. I did it for all those reasons. If you're asking me why I'm stepping in the ring right now, it's because Jordy's just not a very likable dude. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I pride myself in being able to be friends with everybody. There ain't, I don't think Jordy's got a friend one. Don't, the only thing you're knocking out is a double cheeseburger, a large fry, and a drink. Let's be real here. <laughs> um. Okay. Boogie, you going to take that? you going to take that? Because I think, Boogie, you're technically lighter than Wings right now. I might be. I, I, what you weigh today, Wings? I'm at 4.03 today with a oh, we are uh, 64-inch exactly, waist. I am 4.03 today with a 68-inch waist. So technically, I guess I'm fatter. And you know what? I don't need to be skinnier than you. I, how I might have a double cheeseburger with a milkshake for dinner, and I still think I can take you down. Do you know what I've been working on this whole time? Do you know the one thing I've been working on? The one thing you haven't been working on, and that's cardio. I've been walking my dogs. I've been punching my bag. I've been on my feet. I went to a convention this weekend. I walked around downtown Houston. I, I thought you were. About I can to tell be on my feet for two like hours. Can you on your feet for two minutes. Shoes? What? I thought I thought you were about to tell me you were getting, working on getting advertisements for the bottom of your shoes because I haven't been working on that. Oh, you you are really confident that you're going to knock me out, huh? Let me ask you something, Weeks. What do you think you could do to me that my own mother didn't do to me when I was fucking eight? Okay, probably, you, probably fuck you. I mean, I don't know. You, you are you, you oh, trying to come shit. on? Is that it? You trying to get laid? This it ain't, it ain't that kind of oh, fight, shit. Jordy. It ain't that kind of fight, Jordy. The only kind of fuck you're about to get. You, you just have to fuck what out. I wouldn't do to you what I, what I couldn't do to you that your mother couldn't do to you. And that's where your mind goes. That's where you mind. Dude, my mom used to hit me in the face for breakfast. OK, I mean, she also gave me a, a, you know, a set of waffles with it. But every day before school, that bitch did more to me than you're going to do in six minutes in a ring. Is that why you had those uh, deliverance teeth? Uh, I mean, that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of it. <laughs> she, my smile is beautiful and you're going to get to see it from the ground. How's that sound? I will get to see it from the ground. Will I be able to see the rack for like the, the hard hat system for your teeth? You know, look, I've been talking to a couple boxers, Jordy, and you know what they all tell me? They're all telling me exactly this. I shouldn't even be telling you my strategy, but it's very simple, okay? All I got to do is outlast you, all right? 
you're going to set down in that ring after about 60 seconds. You and I both know it. I don't even have to knock you down. You're going to end up setting down because you haven't been doing the cardio. You've got to do I, the cardio. What, what part of what part of it doesn't look like I've been doing cardio? The fact that every time I see a video of you, every time I see a video of you, it's it's less than 30 seconds long. Every video you put out is less than 30 seconds long with those loopy ass punches. I mean, you're you're. you're I, look, I, have you been working on your punch? Let me ask. Can you hit? Yes, I can hit. Mm, we'll see. We'll see, because I know I can take a hit. I, I guarantee you, whatever you can throw, I can handle it. Well, let's talk about that. Um, Wings, Boogie keeps bringing up your cardio. What exactly are you doing for cardio? Uh, the exact thing I'm doing, uh, I do 20 repetitions of farmer's walk. I do a 45-minute walk, and I do 15 minute with jab pyramids. Damn. Do you believe that, Boogie? I don't know. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm prone to believe him, but I just haven't seen the progress. I guess I'll have to see it in the ring because every time you, you I should see probably look at my Twitter because, like, you've seen me go start at four twenty six, and I'm almost under four hundred pounds. My goal is to be three eighty at the time of the bell. Dude, that's incredible. But I'm also telling you right now, in my opinion, it's the worst time for you to be cutting weight because you know when you lose weight, you lose fifty percent muscle. I'm not worried about getting weaker. I'm worried about getting stronger. I'm worried about pumping iron every day. I'm worried about punching my bag. I'm trying yeah, to be strong. Me, me losing 50% of my muscle means that I still have 50% more than you got. Oh. Like, you never did anything physically active in your life. Baby, I bench press. I bench, dude, I squat 400 pounds every time I stand up. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you tell to another 400-pound man, this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm just genuinely honest. Genuinely honest. I'm... 12 years older than you. I'm fighting polycythemia. I've got it in law. I've got all the shit I've got going on. And I still sometimes think I'm healthier than you right now, Jordy. I need you to prove me wrong. All right. When, but when's I'm the last you ain't gonna time? get the chance to prove me wrong in the ring. You ain't not getting the chance to prove me wrong in that ring. After that first bell rings, if you're still standing, and I I, 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 I mean the only way I'm like, I imagine you can make it wrong in the ring. Is because you're tired from the ring walk, and you're already ready to quit. Well, what if I come out on a mark cart then? How about that? How about rent a motor scooter? I mean, would that be, wouldn't that be cheating? Uh, I, no, I, I ain't fighting you in it. I'm just saying, get to the ring. How about that? How about okay, that? Okay, you buy about... yourself thirty seconds. I got you. I feel you. It's a good strategy. <laughs> when's Son, the? You when's are the... all talk. You are all talk. When's the last time either one of you have had a soda? Boogie, you first. When's the last time you drank a soda? Uh, regular soda or Mountain Dew Zero? I mean, they're both bad, but like, when's the last time you had a Mountain Dew Zero? <laughs> well, I mean, I drank one for, for on camera while you were here. That's the last actual soda I've had. When it comes to Mountain Dew Zero, that's my only caffeine source. I don't do caffeine any other way. And so I've been drinking one every morning since you left, and they are delicious. Jordy, what about you? Dog, I, I've almost given up food at this point. Like, I'm literally drinking two protein shakes today and sleep. Damn. That is the what? opposite of training. That is the opposite of training. <laughs> no, that's that's getting 50 pounds off my body to get my longevity up so I can put you in a, in a little coma. Yeah, if you can hit me at that point, if you can lift your fucking arms, dude. Oh, come on. You gotta remember, you're not fucking Wolverine. You're not gonna minutes. cut a can you punch kick flip for on six my ass? minutes when you can't stay awake. You're literally telling me right now you've been sleeping all day. That's the opposite of training. Hey, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna get my calories up when I get in that ring. But right now, I'm trying to get this weight off. You know what I've been doing today, Jordy? I got up after I, I got a 4 a.m. text. I got up. I launched my podcast. Porn, I, I have trained. I have walked my dogs. I am working on other podcast interviews. I'm up living my life every day. You're sleeping through your day. What are I'm, you doing? I'm this is the peak of your life. This is the prime of your life. This is the last time you're ever going to be relevant. Do you understand? Right here, right now is the last time you are ever going to be relevant. Why aren't you striking on that? Why aren't you vlogging? Why aren't you doing a podcast? Why aren't you doing shows? You're sleeping. Don't worry about sleep. Worry about your life. Worry about your career. Worry about your work right now. Worry about training. I'm glad you're losing weight. I'm glad this is a good excuse for you to lose weight. 
But I want to put a good show on there. If you fall asleep 30 seconds in, that's not a good show. I mean, you're telling me worried about my work. I mean, like I've streamed almost every day for the last two months. And you've made, what, four videos? In a podcast? Oh, baby, I've I've logged every day. You have no idea how much how much I've got cataloged up right now. You got no idea. Me and Michael filmed every single day for six straight days. I got content to run circles around you. I've got podcast interviews. I'm interviewing somebody tomorrow. I'm interviewing somebody on Friday. I, I I'm running circles around you in terms of content. You might be fat. You might be slimmer than me. You might be a little faster than me. You might be a little more mobile than me. But I can sit in a chair and still run laps around you right now. I, I wish you were. Longer than I you. wish you were using. Listen, Jordan. Jordy, no bullshit. I wish you were using this opportunity. You've been given an incredible opportunity here. I'm so proud of you for using it to lose weight. But people are interested in you. People want to hear you speak. People want to hear you uh, be a person, man. Be a person. Uh, you know. Stop for two seconds, uh, Boogie. I, I do have to agree with Boogie. I feel like uh, the people do want like a vlog, like you know, Jordy talking to the camera on the Wings of Redemption uh, YouTube channel before this fight happens. It, are you going to do that, or are you just going to stick to the streaming? Well, my, my big thing is I got a wife and stuff to support. Boogie's riding solo right now, so, like, I got to keep the money flow coming in as well. And, Boogie, you also left off that I'm better looking than you in that list of things. <laughs> oh, what fucking planet, cue ball? Holy shit, I've had a glow up like you wouldn't fucking believe, Okay. All right. Look, look, even Kelly's texting me every once in a while. You know that. You know you know that. Shut up. Wings' wife is texting you. Shut up, Boogie. Oh, she ain't, but you know she wants to. You know she wants to. Look at me. <laughs> I'm the upgrade. Sorry, you're not going to take that, are you? <laughs> I'm the upgrade. I'm sure, she'll, I'm sure she'll feel different when you take your teeth out to put them in a glass when you sleep. <laughs> Oh, these are implants, baby. These are implants. I could use these to chew both you all up. Okay? They might look like fucking horse teeth, but they're mine. Okay? Uh, what does uh, winning this... I'm going to go to Wings first. Um, let's say you beat Boogie in the ring, right? And I, I, I think you are the favorite. Most people think that Wings has the edge here. Um, you know, you have height advantage, you have re reach advantage, and you're younger than Boogie. Um, let's say you win this thing. What changes on the internet after getting a win here? I mean, you want the honest answer? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I don't know what changes. Um, it gives me, a, it gives, like I said, it gives me a spotlight. And I, it depends on what I can do with that spotlight. Yeah, my wife's him in. We should fucking fight Phil. <laughs> yeah, fuck DSP, man. I cannot believe that fucking clown. Um, but hey, look, I think you and Boogie doing this fight automatically puts you guys at level two. DSP is still stuck at level one, and he is not, he's never making it to level two. And I think whoever wins this fight makes it to level three. I'll be honest with you, man. Going into this fight, um, I know what a miracle it's going to be for me to win this thing. I I'm thinking about this like Rocky, okay? If I can make it to the end of this fight, I'm proud of myself. Hell, I'm proud of myself for stepping in the ring. 48-year-old man ain't never been in a fight in his life, fighting all the health conditions I've been fighting. I'm okay with getting in that ring. And even if I got knocked out 30 seconds in, I'm going to be proud of me. And I hope there's people out there that are going to be proud of me. I'm getting my self-esteem back right here. That's what's important to me. I, I want to know that I can do this. I want to feel my power. I want to feel my strength. But win this fight, win this fight, I, I, I'm going to be so full of myself. You thought I was conceited back in the day. Oh, my God. When, when I win this fight, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to ride that high for the rest of my life. I'll lose 200 pounds in the next year. I'll rebuild my career. I will do everything that I possibly can with that power and that strength. I will ride it into the grave if I have to. And it's a shame, Jordy, hearing you talk, knowing you're going into this as the favorite, knowing the edge you have on me, that you ain't saying the exact same thing. You well, should be riding high. I'm, right the, I'm the favorite fact, for a reason. Fact, no, listen to me. Listen to me. You can talk, but you can talk when I'm done talking. I'm saying right now, 
right now you should be riding high as a kite. This should be the best moments of your life because this is some. Have you ever felt more alive? I bet you haven't because I sure as shit haven't. The risking my teeth, risking this shit, risking my career, risking all of this, putting it all on the line. This is this is what life is about. This is exciting. This is amazing. And and you're sleeping through it. I can't understand that. And if you win this thing, there's going to be people out there who are going to want a piece of you. They're going to want content. They're going to want to watch you. They're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to interact with you. You better give them that. If you knock my ass out, if you win this by decision, however it is you win this, you better take full advantage of this shit. Because that's, I, I'm telling you, I want it 10 times more than you do. And that's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing because I need Is that true? This. Is I that need true, this. Wings? Does Boogie want this more than you? Boogie, Boogie's in the, in the idea that he wants it more than me because in his head, he's afraid of me because, like, I'm sleeping through this because I know I got an easy payday coming up. I mean, like, I'm going to sleep Boogie at any point I want to sleep Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> like there, there's there's no fear in my heart. He's like building this shit up in his head, like he's Rocky versus like Apollo Creed. I'm over here like I'm Deontay Wilder facing somebody from Myrtle Beach. You know, it's it's, it's just another day at the office. Boogie, I gotta say this to you: you yeah. better make it to round two at least. You better make it to round two at least. I you cannot can't go imagine. down in round one. If you go down in round one. Oh, man, I don't think you're going to get the respect. But if you make no. it to round two, I think you're getting the respect. Keemstar, listen to me, okay? You'll throw in that towel before I'll, I'll go down. I promise you that. I don't care if I have to pick my teeth up off of the ground. I don't care if I have to crawl my way up those ropes. I am telling you, I am doing everything in my power. If I have a damn heart attack in the middle of that ring, I still ain't quitting until the end of that third round. Didn't you just get you knocked out that? by like a gaming content creator like at a convention? That was a bit, Jordy. You ain't that <laughs> dumb, are you? That's a bit, Jordy. That's you know, a what, bit. You know what's a bit? A, a stretch that your defense sucks ass. Like, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see the difference between an actual joke video and what I look like in the ring because I've been doing it. I've been working with boxers. I've been practicing. I've been doing it every day. I got lessons between now and then. It, it ain't over till it's over. So let's see if you can tell the difference between a joke video and reality when my fist is up your ass. Boogie, quick question. And, and then we'll go right to Crystal. Um, you're like, you know, I said in the documentary, I called you a pussy, you know, and what I meant by that is like, you, you would never fight anyone. You would never hurt a fly. Like, you're yeah. a people pleaser. You know, those are your own words. Yeah. How the fuck do you get, like, how do you flip that switch inside of you to actually want to hurt wings? Because like, when you're in this fight, you're going to have to want to hurt him. You're going to have five, to want to put him down. Five like, how are you going to find that in yourself? Five milligrams of psychedelics. That's where, that's where I found it. I found I found it in five uh, five I'm sorry five grams of psychedelics. That's where I found it. I realized it makes all sense, kinds of shit about book. life. Listen, I'm talking, Jordy. Calm down. You can have your time. Okay, I'm telling you right now. I learned everything about this. I learned that this is a game. I learned that it's meant to be played, and I learned that I was playing it wrong. Okay, there are some people that have a beating coming to them. There are some people that need to get hit. And Jordy's signing up for it. He's asking for it. He says, you know what? I don't think you can do it. Let me show you. Show me what you got. So I will show you. That's how. That's how. Because at the end of the day, Chris. he's literally walking right up to me and saying, hit me. Hit me. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit. Crystal, go ahead. Um, I just want to ask both of you guys, because obviously at the end of the day, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. What do you want your overall message to be to someone out there that's watching you two guys get in the ring and do this? Because on paper, it seems impossible, right? So what do you want when it's all said and done? What do you want your messages to be to those people? For me, at the, at the end of the day, I want to say that it's never too late to turn your shit around. And yeah, I might not ever be a 200 pound man. I might ever be skinny. I might not ever be a fitness influencer, but I can get healthy enough to what wear a letdown, the really? I, I'm just saying, it's, it, I'm saying it might not happen, but if it does, that's great. But I'm saying even at 48 years old, even at once living 600 pounds, I couldn't stand up, man. I couldn't stand up. My wife had to help me from my recliner to my wheelchair, dude. That's the life I used to live. And now I'm living this life. And in a few years, I'm hoping I'm living it 10 times better. 
So the question is, uh, if I can even get to the point with everything I've gone through and everything I've faced and everything I'm facing now, if I can even get to a point where this boxing board has signed off and said, you know what, he can do it. And my doctor got to the point and said he could do it. Do you think they would have put a 600 pound wheelchair bound man into the ring? That's how much I've improved my life. And if I can I do that at thought. 48, anybody can. Uh, Wings, same question to you. Are you hoping to inspire anyone, any of your fans? Oh, I got fans? Oh, um, inspiration. Like, Boogie kind of took my answer. I just want people to re- know it's never too late. Like, you know, me and Boogie are obviously old and washed up. That's that's where we're at at this point in time in our career. But, like, even then, it's like I've been through the peaks and valleys of my life. I've been up and down weight. If you want to put your mind to it, you can do anything you want to do and you can overcome the fear that comes with just doing things and getting out there and putting yourself out there. Because I know as a fat person, I live my life insecure. And with that insecurity comes me not wanting to do things, doubting, and I'm hoping I can find somebody out there that is in a similar situation that will take what I've done and translate it to their life, like either be it... um, you know, getting a friend, getting a girlfriend, whatever it might be, because like you, you are. How could I say this? I don't know. That's my message. <laughs> no, that no, that's good. And look, I want everyone in this room to know one thing: that what I'm about to say sounds like the biggest bullshit in the fucking world, but I swear to God, it's the truth. I got on a fucking plane, flew to Conway, South Carolina. Met Wings, seen him working out, seen him exercise, went over to Arkansas, met Boogie, seen him working out, seen him exercising. And I walked away from that saying, well, if these two 400, 400 pound motherfuckers can walk around and do all this exercise and shit and carry 400 fucking pounds of weight, 400 fucking pounds of like pain, harassment and bullying and still do this shit. What the fuck is my excuse? Ever since I've got back from this fucking trip, I've been editing this documentary and I've been working out and I personally am down seven fucking pounds since I got home. I swear to God. Oh, (laughs) Um, I have a quick question for uh, this can go to both of you guys. I mean, honestly, I think it's awesome. Um, I think it's courageous of both of you guys to be taking on this challenge. I mean, honestly, it's a lot of risk, right? I think that both of you guys are putting yourself on a huge platform and you're putting yourself out there to, let's be honest, the internet can be very cruel to be made fun of and to be mocked. And the fact that you guys are both brave enough to come out there and to do that on that stage and to show people and the youth and even younger people that maybe might be struggling with their weight or struggling with their insecurities, that they can still be something amazing. I think that's an incredible thing. And I think no matter what the outcome of this match is, I think that should be the underlining message of it is that if you have courage and you're willing to risk it, you can do anything. Um, okay, real quick question for both of you guys. I'll ask Boogie first. So, Boogie, you were saying before that, you know, you're you're someone who likes to be friends with people. You're a friendly guy, right? But when it comes to Wings, you know, that's not really someone you could get behind. Looking at Wings, looking at his history, looking at who he is, what are some of the things that you look at Wings and you're like, I don't fucking like this guy. I want to knock this guy out. Why don't you like Wings? What about him specifically? Man, I... If I'm being genuine about it, and I mean, I have to really swallow my ego to answer this genuinely, but I will. I look at Jordy and I see a man who just like me sought comfort over doing the work. He decided to stay in his home and give up and not, not, not fight for himself and not fight for his life and, and uh, fight for his fucking family. Right now he's got people to fight for and I lost mine. And, and, and I, I look at, what we've both done to our bodies and I see Jordy getting up to as big as he was getting bypass surgery and still not losing as much weight as I did. And I see so much of what I hate in myself and Jordy. I mean, all the controversy, any of that bullshit aside, I don't really care. I don't even know that much about it. What bothers me is when I look at Jordy, I see a younger version of me and I want to knock some sense into him. I want him to understand that the path I have led, the path he is currently on, ends in misery, pain, and disaster. 
and I'm trying to fix that now at 48. He can fix that shit right now at 37. And if I can knock that into him, I plan to. Jordy, how do you respond to that? Um, I honestly, I blanked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess the question is, the question is, is there something about Boogie that you, do you just hate the guy for, or you want to clown on him about? Oh yeah, there is, there's a special, like I see Boogie making the same, my Michael? Yeah, I've seen Boogie making the same mistakes I made in my career over and over and over again. Like, um, riding the pity videos and, like, airing out his drama online and things of that nature. Putting it out there, like, his girlfriends and, like, going on stream and saying outlandish things and bringing escorts on stream. And it's like, you're not building anything and you're always fence-sitting and you never really take a side. You're just you're like the internet's coward when it comes to actually having an opinion. You just want to be everybody's friend, and it, it just comes ungenuine. I mean, I, honestly, that's something I'm trying to work on. So you ain't you ain't entirely wrong. I don't know if that's worth a beating, Jordy. I think I think ruining your own body and ruining your own you life. Came, is you came you came to me for the beating. I was asked. You came to me to ask me if I wanted to fight. I mean, I, that is true. But again, it, look at it. Look at this. It's one of the nicest things I've ever done for somebody is, is asking you if you want to fight because you are you are using this opportunity. And even if I put you on the ground, I think you're still going to use this opportunity. I wish you would use it better. I wish you would fight harder for yourself. I really do. But that said, I'm glad, you know, and you can criticize me all you want. At the end of the day, it's more about what you're doing for yourself. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you doing it for yourself. I got me. Where I got me. Don't worry about me. I got me. It, it took me a while to get where I'm at right now, but I got me now. Okay? You need to start worrying about you. I'll tell you what. Uh, Boogie, you're known for, like, not harming a fr- uh, fly or not fighting anyone. So if you hit Wings of Redemption one time, you know, things are going to change for you and you're going to prove something, right? Wings, if you actually get on a plane and end up in London, I mean, you're known for not showing up to that PKA camping trip. You're going to just prove to people something by showing up in London. That's an unfair assessment, to be perfectly honest. Like, unlike Boogie, I went and got my my surgery done in Mexico because I didn't have them big Boogie dollars. So I had to get the bargain basement shit. So I had to get some seedy, like, backyard, like, guy with a knife in his hand to cut my stomach out. And to me, that's way more scary than anything Boogie's ever done. And then then on the fact I did the FPS boot camp, I went and lived at a man's house in another state. You know, I mean, like, to say, Vegas is unfair because I didn't want to go into the Georgia woods in the cold April when it was supposed to rain all week. There's a huge difference. I'm just saying what the Internet has labeled you as, right? You know. I've seen all these clips from FPS Kyle on PKA just recently, like over, you know, the, the last few weeks of him constantly saying, you're not going to show up. You will not show up. You will not get on the plane. You will not go. I mean, like, isn't FPS Kyle just a stoner at this point in his life? Like he doesn't do the FPS Russia thing anymore. He just kind of sits around and smokes himself silly. Oh, shit. <laughs> What uh, about uh what about you, Boogie? Uh I seen Frank Castle was in here. Uh I'm sure he say? was. I often wonder if he ever gets tired of riding my coattails. But go ahead. Is, is there any why didn't you fight Frank Castle? Why? Because like, he's a piece of shit. I wouldn't, some, I wouldn't punch him with something. somebody else's fist. He's a piece of shit. I'm not interested in that guy. Like there are certain like look, I've learned a lot of things about myself in the last few years. One of the very first things I've learned was a lesson I learned from that guy. And that there are some people you cannot reason with. There are some people that are not on your level, that are, do not vibrate with you, that are not uh, part of your tribe, not part of your life. I, that, I, I got nothing for that guy. Not piss, not vinegar, nothing. Do you he's think non-existent. he's a cloud chaser? Or do you That's think the only thing he is. That's the only thing is. Well, I, why, we, why do we drive to the Publix he works at and ask him? Okay. Because that's the one thing he, that's his one claim to fame in the whole world is that he harassed me. Imagine that being your legacy. That's a shame. So that's why I wouldn't fight that guy. I wouldn't piss on him if he was on fire. I ain't interested in that guy. I'm interested in you, Jordy. 
I'm interested in you because you are as low a station as you might have ever been. You are still a thousand miles higher than any Frank ever could be. Um, just another uh, quick question, right? So I know that, you know, obviously training and everything and, you know, you have to fix your eating, you have to change a lot of habits. It's a really hard, it's a really big life change. You know, how was it for you having to rapidly, you know, stop, you know, cha basically changing how you live your entire life? Was it really hard? How did you get through it? And did you ever have any slip ups? And, you know, how did you get through that? Let me feel this let wings first. go first because yeah, let wings go yeah. first. Um, the, the, the me, I didn't want to get embarrassed, and this is not a really slighted boogie, but like I was a pile of junk when Keemstar approached me. Like I was at the point where I couldn't walk to the mailbox and back without my back hurting. I was four hundred and twenty six pounds. I was sitting there letting myself waste with depression and like just doing the bare minimum to get by every day, and like this gave me an opportunity to have positive attention pointed towards me. It gave me an opportunity to love myself again. It gave me an opportunity to see from the outside looking at my flaws. Like one of the biggest factors that kicked my weight, like me wanting to train every day and get better was Keemstar like coming to my house and like filming me. And I looked like the fu a fucking water balloon. I looked like the Michelin man's like illegitimate son over here trying to box. <laughs> and like, I'm like, I don't want to be this person. And like, that's, that to me is what goes every day. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to go out there and be gassed by the time I get to the ring. I don't want to go get knocked out by like, you know, a 50 year old disabled man. You know, it, this is what motivates me to, to go training. I'll be honest with you. I've been on a steady incline since 2017 when I got my bypass surgery. It has been very slow, but it has been very steady. Um, I've done almost nothing but progress, though. COVID hit, and I did put on like 70 pounds again. That sucked. But I've done nothing but increase my mobility over the years, increase my endurance, increase my ability. My blood work keeps coming back better every, every time I do it. Um, and this kicked me into gear a little bit. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I have been far from perfect when me and Mike are traveling. I eat like shit a couple times for sure. But – the motivation is I'm still fighting for my life inside of this fight and outside of this fight, man. I've been miserable. My body has been so miserable. I couldn't stand up long enough to take a shower. I've been so miserable. I couldn't see my own dick. Hell, there's a point when I was What's 600 pounds, I could barely reach it. You know what I'm saying? And so like at the end of the day, my only goal winning this fight's great. That's gravy on top. But my only goal is to live life without being miserable, live life without being in pain, live life where my body functions and works. I can walk my dog. I can make love to somebody I care about. I can uh, just travel. I can enjoy the, the nature walks and, and just enjoy fucking life, man. And not, I used to be in so much pain just sitting here. Right now I'm sitting in this chair. I'm in zero pain. My back doesn't hurt at all. Three years ago, at the beginning of COVID, sitting here, my back would have been in extreme misery. So that's that's always yeah. But what if you guys die? Do you know how dangerous this is? Dangerous this is. Like, do you guys really understand how fucking dangerous this is? This is boxing. All right. This is not like all these YouTubers that are doing boxing and stuff. Yeah, it looks fun, right? The audience has no idea. They're, they're they they don't understand that one of them could die. All right. You guys know that one of you can die in that ring, right? Everybody dies, man. Everybody, everybody dies. You know, what, what a way to go. What kind of legacy is that? YouTuber dies in the ring fighting for his career, fighting for his life, fighting to get better, fighting to get stronger. Hell, if you got to die, die a warrior. If you got to die, die fighting, right? No, I'm not going to die. I had my heart tested in 2018. My heart's perfectly healthy. My blood works immaculate. You know, if Boogie dies in the ring, I'll feel bad about it. But, you know, it happens. <laughs> That's the Wings of Redemption, I know. That's him. All right, guys. Uh, one question that I didn't get to ask in the documentary um, was um, you both had weight loss surgery. All right. And I think you did it uh, like within a year of each other. It was relatively at the same time. And after the weight loss surgery, 
both of you lost like so much weight. I mean, th there are photos online of you guys like looking skinny, like it was a massive success, but then you gained it all back. How the fuck does that happen? You got to understand, like everybody in this room, we know nothing about this surgery. Like, uh, like explain to us, how the fuck do you gain it back? Wings go first. I got the way I gained it back was mountains of fucking stress. Like I had cops busting into my house with assault rifles in my face. I had, you know, FBI cases. I had people, you know, trying to deplatform me. Like I got, I have just a, a, a smorgasbord, an incel army that follows me around and tries to ruin everything I do in life. It's the reason I, I it's one of the reasons I went into a depression so much. But one of my coping mechanisms, and like what I've always said, I have a bad reward system because in my life, when I do bad, I eat. When I do good, I eat. When I do, when I win a game, I eat. When I lose a game, I eat. Everything goes back to food. And what you end up learning little ways around the system. You learn that chips are getting fined up to a, a nice gray mesh so you can get more chips in. Soda doesn't really fuck with your stomach, you know. Things of that nature. So, like, it, it, it slowly, surely happens, and your stomach slowly, surely stretches back out. And mine was strictly from just mountains of stress. Uh, man, Boogie. Man, food is my drug of choice. Uh, I, I mean, it's my crack. It's my heroin. It's my nicotine. It's all of them combined. And I have had a love-hate relationship with it my whole life. And it is a compulsion, man. I mean, it is, it, it is a compulsion, one that I struggle with all day, every day. And it's exhausting, man. Uh, and the bypass surgery, like, made it so that I couldn't indulge in that compulsion for a really long time. And I got all the way down to 3.30 at the beginning of uh, COVID, which is still a drastically huge dude. But still, I was doing better than I'd ever done. I hadn't weighed 3.30 since I was in 10th grade. And COVID happened and I'm locked in my house and I'm stressed all the time. And hell, I thought I would single handedly keep the local fast food restaurants open so they didn't have to close during COVID. And I think I did. I think there's a couple Mexican restaurants that wouldn't be around if I wasn't around. But I, got, <laughs> I, I got back up to 400 pounds because I thought the world was ending. And certainly my world was ending. I was dealing with the death of my career, the death spiral of you know, everybody used to love me. Now everybody seems to hate me. I have creators, even you at one point coming at me during that period of time. And I'm like, you know what? What am I what am I fighting for? What am I working for? I ain't got my family. That's gone. I ain't got my career. That's gone. What am I what am I doing here? So I went back to my drug of choice and I hit it just like a heroin addict in any ditch in the world, man. And right now. Thanks to this fight and thanks to this opportunity you've given me, I'm getting that positive attention again. There's creators rooting me on again. There's fans rooting me on again. And I don't need it. I don't need it. So I don't, I'm not putting it in my face because I've got what I've, I've got something to fight for. I got something to work towards. But that's how I did it. I, I mean, it took work too. I, that's something prior to these psychedelics I would never admit. But it took work, man. I was eating five, six meals a day to, because I couldn't eat big meals. I still can't eat big meals. Uh, I, but I, I can eat the wrong foods and I sure shit chose them. Cheeseburgers, hamburgers, hot dogs, ice cream, dude, ice cream would give me diarrhea within 10 minutes of eating it cause of dumping syndrome. And I was still eating milkshakes during COVID <laughs> cause I wasn't eating to live. I was eating to die, man. Uh, it's addiction pure and pure and through. And it's a, an addiction I'm going to deal with my entire of my life. But as long as I got something to fight for. As long as I got people rooting me on, I think I can keep beating it, you know? Well, I'm glad that you talked about the addiction part of it, right? Because I've seen so many YouTubers start training for a boxing match, and then they get addicted to boxing. Are either one of you, like, now starting to get obsessed with going and hitting that bag every single day? And, and, and are you getting obsessed? Are you having a little bit of an addiction to your workouts? Uh, that that's a, that's a big no for me because like like right now I'm doing like, <laughs> like as, as, as a big four hundred pound land monster like punching a bag rubs me raw like I get like um like under my titties and like my armpits and stuff like that just the, the motion of punching over and over again makes the skin rub and once it starts sweating I end up getting like these big sores and rashes that I constantly have to take care of <laughs> boogie. 
but I was swimming last year. I got addicted to it, man. I loved being in the pool. I loved coming out of it exhausted. I loved going to my gym and having everyone root me on. And now I'm going back to my gym and they're rooting me on again. And I love that positive attention. I love that kindness. But when it comes to the actual boxing itself, you know, I got a, uh, a standing bag and I put it in my living room and I put my gloves on top of it. And that means every time I walk my fat ass up to go to the kitchen or get my fat ass up to go to the bathroom, I can easily pop over there and hit it. And now it's become part of my routine. And it is a fun part of my routine. Uh, it's, it's exhausting. And sometimes when my back pain is really bad, it hurts. When my knee pain is bad, it hurts. I ain't dealing with no titty boils yet though, wings. So I don't know what you're doing wrong. That means you're not throwing actual punches. You're not throwing actual punches. Oh, that might be it. But what I'm saying (laughs) though, I think you might just have an infection, see a doctor. But what I am saying though, is if I won this thing and you wanted me to fight again and you could find an opponent on my level, which is to say a very low level still, uh, I, 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 would, I would do this again. Oh, uh, so you're trying to say you're going to fight Airsoft Fatty next? I would kill to fight Airsoft Fatty. I would Any fat man on YouTube that's my height, my age, my weight, if you are interested, you let Keemstar know. Um, Boogie, I, I don't think there's another human on this planet that's your height, your age, and your weight. I mean, you know what they say, Keemstar, there's a lot of fat people, and there's a lot of old people, but there ain't a lot of old fat people. I'm a lucky motherfucker. Jordy, what about you? Uh, you win this thing. Do you think you'd do this again? Um, I'd have to experience it first. Like, I, I've only got to experience the front half of it, and I know going – going forward like the front half of it will be a lot easier the second time around so it won't be much of a hassle because like we had to do a lot of shit in a very short period of time and i, I don't think a lot of people understand like how short a period of time it is to get shit like mris and blood work and all these things you know otc scans and like doctors are packed out most of the time so like that was a huge hurdle for me and boogie to jump over and train on top of that Go ahead, Crystal. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, you know, a big thing about uh, boxing is, of course, the walkouts and um, what you wear. So I was curious, have any either of you guys started thinking about what your walkout song would be or what you might wear on the night? Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Let it be a surprise. Let it be a surprise, boys. <laughs> um, I, I will say one thing. I answered in, in part without giving any surprises away. All right. Uh, I, I talked to Keem. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to wear my YouTube bathrobe out. And it's got my name on the back of it. And I'm going to wear these champion shorts I got off of Amazon. And he's like, where's the entertainer in you, Boogie? Where's the showman? Let's talk about doing some real shit. And he lit a fire under my ass. And now I've got some stuff I think you're going to like. Yeah, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, when when people are tuning in to watch Boogie 2988 and Wings of Redemption face off on May 13th on the Misfit Boxing YouTube channel, absolutely free for the prelims of Misfit 007, KSI versus Joe Fournier, they are not tuning in to this boxing match for some high-level skill. They're tuning in to be entertained, uh, you know, and, you know, th- the walkouts, you know, your performance is in the ring. Like, I want you guys both to bring it. You know, everything you can think of doing. I know both of you are down in your careers right now, and you've been sitting there waiting for the opportunity. I heard Jordy and Boogie both say this is a great opportunity to to get that respect back as an entertainer. This is it. Like, you got to put on a show. I mean, I'm a walking meme, Keemstar. How many memes do I got under my name? How many people are doing that table flip gif in a video every single day? How many people remember Mountain Dew? How many people remember me smashing Xbox controllers? Everything I do, and I'm literally planning this thing out to where I'm looking at as 12, 14 possible memeable moments just before this fight even starts. I'm going to make sure everybody remembers. But I'm an entertaining motherfucker. That's the problem, Boogie. You smashed Xbox controllers for entertainment. Jordy has smashed Xbox controllers, like, for real. Like, he's pissed off, and he's smashing that shit. Are you worried about that? No, I'm not worried about that. You know, again, Jordy, and I don't mean to talk too much shit here. I don't mean to get exactly personal. But you remember my Francis character. The point of that character was to make fun 
of people who act like that. That ain't how a person's supposed to act. You don't have control of your emotions. You don't have control of your feelings. I have learned that. I learned that years ago. I learned that when I was a teenager. You're 37, man. That's the whole point of Francis is to make fun of the autistic side of me, the meltdown side of me, the PTSD side of me. And that's just who you are as a person. And that shit means, and at the end of the day, you're lacking a certain amount of discipline. And I, I was think like 25 when I did that shit. I'm just saying, if you can't control your emotions, outside of the ring that I don't know if you're going to be able to control them inside. Cause I'm, I'm telling you, there's no anxiety in me for this. There's no fear for me in this. When I'm in that ring, I'm going to be as cool and calm as collective as I am. The only limit I'm going to have is this old dying body. Okay. Boogie, are you still going to have the limitation of that brain? Boogie, are you saying that like wings might get disqualified by like doing something that he's not supposed to do? I'm saying he's prone to make mistakes. And there's a very real chance he will make that mistake in the ring. And if he makes that mistake in the ring and I am able to capitalize on it, I plan very much to do so. Well, Boogie, let me let you, let me let you on a secret. <clears throat> I'm COD royalty. And as COD royalty, I've made a career out of being the most cheap motherfucker you could possibly be. I'm known for camping. I camp. I'm the godfather of the noob tube, the whole nine. So when you step into this ring, you got to realize – I'm going to cheat as much as I possibly can that the referee will get, let me get away with. Does that not bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. Why would that bother me? You hacking. If you had wall hacks in this fight, I ain't bothered. Are you kidding me? Have you looked in a mirror? Come on. But Boogie, Come we, on. we won't need wall hacks to find you, man. Let's be real. <laughs> Baby, I am the wall. You better <laughs> hack through me. Um, so if I grab, if I grab your head and I like and like move it around, and your fat vertigo doesn't fucking sit right, and I hit you with that one two, that ain't gonna bother you. You grabbing the heads, huh? Is that what you, is that what you think you're gonna be doing? What what else? You, what else are you doing in there? You you grabbing a flaming sword and sprouting wings? And you're gonna learn to fly? What do you think? Uh, I, there might be a rabbit punch or two. <laughs> a rabbit punch I can handle. Okay, a rabbit punch was just lunch at my house. Okay, trust me, I I I got it. I've been, I've been let me go over. Let me I've been go hit over with some... hammers. I've been cut with knives. There ain't nothing you can do that wasn't done to me by the time I was twelve. I, I had shit done to me worse than you could do before I had pubes. Do you guys know the rules of boxing? Like, just just so you know, you can't punch each other in the dick. All right, you can't punch <laughs> each other in the back of the head. If the referee says back up, you're like, you got to back up. There's a lot of rules. Do you guys, are you studying the no, rules? No, my entire of strategy was just well, to punch wait, him in the it, dick. It, what are you talking about? Here's, here's the thing with rules, though, in boxing, Keemstar. I know the rules, but the rules only matter if you get to the scorecard. And, like, neither one of us is making it to the scorecard. We're not going three fucking rounds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, you don't understand. If for some reason this goes to the judges, you both will be fucking legends. I, I I can't see a world where the whole arena isn't standing up, like screaming, like clapping, applauding the fact that you guys carrying around 400 fucking pounds made it all three rounds. Like I, that would be that's never going to happen. Like I, I cannot envision that happening. All right, look, cure. Uh, uh, go ahead and cue the curb your enthusiasm music because I know what I'm setting up right here. OK, and I don't care. All right. There is no way I'm going down. There is no way. And if I go down, I'm getting back up. There is no way I ain't making to the end of that three rounds. I am we telling fully you, expect you to get back up, Boogie, but it, like, if, it's going to be in the locker room. It, let me tell you something. OK, either I make it to the end of three rounds or I die trying. Those are the options. You know, you only got 10 seconds to get up, right? I've been practicing. <laughs> I've been practicing. I've been getting in the floor with me and my dogs. I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. How about you? How much practicing are you doing? Because here's the thing. I, I got a really strong feeling, Jordy, that once I actually connect, and once you're tired, and once you're exhausted, and, and once I actually connect, I think you're going to choose to go down. And I think you're going to choose to not get back up. The same way you chose not to go to boot camp. See, see, I think you're going to make that choice. Camp. I went to boot camp. But here, here's my fear with the match. My fear is the match. I get so tired in round two that with 16 ounce gloves, I won't be able to put your ass on the ground. That's the only way you make it three rounds. You are never putting me on the ground. Take your gloves off and you ain't never putting me on the ground. I'm telling you, 
I am telling you, I kept my balance when a 300-pound woman was ricocheting pop bottles off my skull when I was 10. This is what I made for. Yeah, I but you made weighed like 220 pounds beating. when you were 10. You're, you're, you're 400 now. Let's, be, let's get here to real boogie, not 10, 12-year-old boogie. I'm telling you, I'm just I'm that much more centered. I got a better center of gravity. You guys sound very, very, very confident. So with that in mind, are you guys ready and willing to put a bet on the line between you two? I could do a gentleman's bet. I ain't no financial situation to be betting my house against your trailer, so that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but I could handshake right here, right now. What you got in mind? Um, my, my house is at least paid for. You definitely don't have to be financial, but I think you guys can get creative and you can do a bet between the two of you. If, I don't know, uh, if you make it whoever wins or something like that, what what do you guys want to do? I want his boogie shield. You want my boogie shield? Well, I asked for your play button, but you ain't got one, so I don't know. I do have I, a play I, button. I, got... I do have a play button. <laughs> what you got that I would want? I mean, I have a silver play button. <laughs> you and half the teenagers in the country, what are you talking about? I'm talking about gold, man. Wait, would you guys be willing to bet your silver play buttons? All right, deal. Absolutely. I'll bet, my, I'll bet my silver play button. I'll be. I'll have to dig it out of the garage because I replaced it with my gold one eight years ago. But oh, yeah, I'll shit. dig it out of the garage and it'll be yours if you win. But I'm looking forward to mounting yours right on my wall, wings. <laughs> I'm looking forward to oh my, my play button off the, God. Off the body of your corpse. Was that official? Is is it officially a bet? The silver play buttons are on the line. It's it's official, right? Mm-hmm. You are down, you Jordy? Betting? I'm down. Wow, um, guys, there are major stakes here now in this fight. It just got a level higher. I mean, they're really putting it on the line. Um, I have one quick question for Boogie, actually. Um, Boogie, obviously, you said you are fighting with food addiction. I know that's a real thing. I know it's really hard. And you're saying that uh, this fight has given you the opportunity, you know, to get more positivity back in your life. It's made it easier for you to, you know, separate yourself from those bad eating habits. If you were to lose this fight, do you think that you'd still be able to refrain from this? Or do you find yourself feeling like you may fall right back down into that hole? And if so, how do you going to get out of it? Man, if I lose this, I don't ever want to dance with that demon again if I don't have to. And I don't think I'll have to. Because at the end of the day, showing up is a self-esteem boost to me. This is... A lot. This is asking a lot of a man my age, my size, my health, my my career, um, my history. And if I when I step foot in that ring, I'm going to be proud of myself. And it doesn't matter if the judges uh, count him the winner or if the ref counts me out. I, I, I'm going to be proud of myself. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are going to say, hell, yeah, man, you put on a good show. You gave it your best effort. And that's provided I don't win this thing. Um but in the event that I lose, I don't think I need that demon in my life right now. I think I have enough people out there who care about me, and I'm learning the most important thing, a lesson that I think Jordy needs to learn, and that's that I, I want to care for myself. Because I'm both me and Jordy are in a really unique situation right now. We're in a really unique position that not a lot of people will ever find themselves in. But me and Jordy, if we ever wanted to help other people, and I do, I like helping other people, all we have to do to help other people right now is to help ourselves. If we get our lives together, if we get our bodies together, if we get our careers together, it's going to inspire a lot of other people to do the same. And, and that's one of my biggest motivations right now. Jordy, I hope it's one of yours. Wings, if you lose this fight, like, are you going to be able to handle that? Like, that's going to be devastating to you. Yeah, I'll be able to handle it. Like, my whole life is pain. Like, being a fat person all my life, you learn that life is pain itself. Like, you you learn to expect the worst out of every situation. And it, you know, like, it's it's a boxing match. It's a 100% boxing match. And I could walk into one of Boogie's punches. Like, you know, look at, look at, look at the way Anthony Joshua lost to uh, Andy Ruiz. I'm going to be yep. doing a rematch. 
Yep. Well, guys, I mean, you heard it here. They're betting YouTube play buttons. The stakes are getting higher and higher and higher for the Boogie 298 versus Wings of Redemption on May 13th. Absolutely free to watch on the Misfit Boxing YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't pack on. I cannot wait for this. This is, I mean, guys, this could be. Like, the going to this fight, you're watching this, you really have no idea what could happen. There's, like, a million different crazy outcomes that can happen. Just from the moment that they get out of the locker room and walk to the ring. And what, like Keem said, guys, it's all for free. So, really, if you want to watch an entertaining show, make sure you tune in. Um, 007 live on the Misfits YouTube channel. Once in a lifetime opportunity to watch this live. Don't miss it. Thank you, Wings. Thank you, Boogie. We're going to end it here. May 13th. We'll see you all.